I guess it is moving, right? I'm trying to uh, test the functionality. Is it uh, on the move? Yes, sir, it is. <clears throat> So the topic uh, today I have chosen, uh, rather I have been given, is case method in legal education. And uh, as uh, I have learned that uh, Professor Chopra, my senior colleague, is about to speak about case method in legal research. So I, by and large, I have uh, limited my presentation on case method in legal education, especially professional legal education. Uh, I am here not to share uh, any knowledge or like that, rather uh, to generate a conversation on the basis of uh, one uh, working paper in progress. So uh, in that way, I am uh, more inclined to offer a very important area of study uh, in legal education uh, I, I will rather raise few questions rather than uh, teaching the teachers like uh, yeah, across the world there is a train that training of trainers, TOT. So, uh, so far as uh, my presentation is concerned, kindly don't take it as a TOT model. Rather, I wish to uh, generate conversation on the basis of my ongoing work uh, which I am doing on case method uh, in professional legal education also. But by and large, I have avoided the term professional legal education because here I am going to cover here uh, the legal education part say uh, in its entirety. That is, profession, besides professional legal education, there is academic legal education which is not there in India, but across the world there are trends that uh, law is offered as uh, an academic knowledge domain. Uh, it is an academic subject also. So there is potential of law uh, to learn law as academic subject also. So case method uh, in legal education, I have intentionally uh, avoided the term professional. So at later point of time, I uh, wish to justify that why I did that. So at first, uh, I'm uh, starting with historical background because this is the first session of this uh, workshop. Uh, so the, the historical background is very important to uh, understand and appreciate a particular teaching pedagogical technique that uh, why case method? Uh, or uh, uh, more uh, fundamental question, whether or how far uh, it suits to uh, Indian education system, professional legal education, academic legal education. And uh, that is, I have uh, divided this question uh, in two parts, uh, whether and how far. That is, even if uh, it is uh, proved at the end of the day that it is useful, it has its own use, but uh, how far uh, we'll uh, learn case law, case method or case law method, that is another moot point at later point of time, uh, I will come back to this part. <clears throat> I'm starting with this uh, proposition that uh, case method did not drop from the heaven. That is, uh, it has not come from the blue. Uh, it has actually germinated uh, by conscious effort of human being. Uh, with uh, That is, it is actually a strategy to uh, uh, to channelize legal education in a particular way. And uh, the experiment was initiated at Harvard for the first time in the uh, history of civilization. Harvard University uh, deserves the credit. <coughs> now, why Harvard? Why USA? At what point of time? Because uh, the Kislaw method was uh, uh, not in existence, uh, say, for example, even in uh, mid 19th century. That is, it is very, very, very new uh, pedagogical tool uh, started from 1875. Uh, 
1870s, uh, after uh, Langdale took over the, as dean of Harvard Law School. So in that way, uh, Kislow method is uh, not something very eternal or perennial. Uh, so uh, it has its own history that how even uh, in USA, uh, before the American Civil War, the, um, even during the American Civil War, the way legal education uh, was uh, carried forward, at that point of time, this method was not introduced. This is a new, very new experiment after the American Civil War. So every one of us uh, is aware of this uh, building, the main premises, the front side of American Supreme Court, the most powerful or most uh, legitimate uh, judicial institution the world has ever seen. Uh, but uh, Supreme Court of the United States was not uh, in this shape, that is, building was in this shape, but uh, the authority of Supreme Court was not like that when it started its journey in 1789, uh, with the result that uh, in Marbury versus Madison, the uh, concerned judge, Justice Marshall, Justice Marshall was uh, not at all interested to uh, take the position to accept the position of chief justice of supreme court that this was uh, this uh, is available in uh, several uh, lecture sessions of justice nariman uh, justice nariman uh, repeatedly used to say uh, during his tenure he was famous for several uh, e lectures so I'm since I'm fond of Justice Nariman's uh, lectures, so I learned from uh, him that uh, Justice Marshall was uh, actually reluctant to accept the position because uh, down the line in the first decade of American Supreme Court, the American Supreme Court uh, just position was not very lucrative at that point of time because American Supreme Court. Uh, was not the way we see today that uh, most powerful and legitimate judicial institution, prestigious also. So at that point of time, it was like, uh, to some extent, the refuge of politicians and bureaucrats like that. Because in American system, uh, the appointment of judges uh, is very, very different from the model India follows. So. Uh, at later point of time, especially after uh, the American Civil War, uh, or uh, more specifically after the Second World War, the, uh, in last century, American uh, Supreme Court started gaining the power and legitimacy the way we see today. <clears throat> The American Civil War is uh, very important for this lecture because this is practically the starting point of uh, uh, for which the cl uh, clinical legal education or case method will be born at later point of time. As I uh, mentioned earlier that uh, this clinical legal education or case method is very, very new in the uh, in the history of judicial process or uh, the legal education. So American Civil War, it uh, lasted from 1861 to 1865. It is, uh, it has a huge impact uh, in the uh, in consequential history of USA. So complete lawlessness, the way it was perceived American Civil War time and thereafter also for some time. So complete lawlessness and result is phenomenal loss of life, liberty, and property. Uh, I mentioned uh, these three, life, liberty, and property, because life, liberty, and property is the uh, three very fundamental concerns of uh, human civilization for which state is born. In fact, uh, state is born to protect the life, liberty, and property uh, if we go back to 1789, the American, the French Revolution, French Revolution also was uh, done to protect life, liberty, and property of the citizenry, etc. So life.
will get in uh, Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau's literature, also the social contract theoreticians. So uh, American Civil War uh, <clears throat> has shown that uh, how much lawless a society may be. Huge loss of human life and suffering, huge loss of liberty, freedom, uh, because uh, uh, many, many uh, thousands of people were imprisoned, tortured, etc. So it is against dignity also. Property, uh, huge uh, property is uh, destroyed. So in that way, this uh, in aftermath, the uh, American legal education uh, has uh, reacted through this uh, pedagogical technique that uh, this uh, this method or clinical legal education. Now, this gentleman, uh, Christopher Columbus Langdale, that is, uh, we know that Columbus uh, invented USA, but also it is said in the legal academia that uh, this Columbus actually invented the USA, US legal system. Now, in this uh, discussion, we'll see how a pedagogical technique can uh, leave a lasting impact on the legal system itself. That is, the way pedagogy uh, started this adopting these techniques, American legal system also got impacted by this pedagogical technique. How will this be discussing slowly? So Langdale, the dean of Harvard Law School, uh, was born in 1826, uh, died in 1906. But more importantly, this is this chronology of Langdale is important. That Langdale, from the very uh, beginning of his career, he was attached to this Harvard system. Say, for example, 1845 to 48, uh, Langdell did graduation, not in law subject, but in other subject from Harvard College. 1851 to 54, he was student of law in the Harvard Law School itself. 1854 to 70, he was engaged in law practice in the New York City. 1870 to 1895, uh, he was a dean of law, Harvard Law School. This is the most important part we are going to discuss. So we see that uh, Langdale is a product of Harvard. That is, he was uh, well aware of the Harvard system because he uh, did undergraduate degree from Harvard College. Langdale was well aware of uh, Harvard law schooling system. That is how the law as a subject, it is taught, uh, different, different subjects of law. These are taught. So because uh, he was a student of law there and Langdale uh, had the law practice of one and a half uh, decades. So he has seen the practice life also. And when he was given opportunity as Dean of Law 1870, he started an experiment and which created a history. He started the experiment with case method because uh, of his background. To some extent, uh, he uh, sometimes is compared to uh, Professor Menon <clears throat> because Professor Menon also in India, Professor Madhav Menon also uh, came from law practice and that also in the city of Delhi, Kerala also. So in that way, very, very similar uh, features are there between these two gentlemen. Now this uh, deanship uh, in Harvard Law School onward, 1870 to 1895, these 15 years, uh, practically the golden years of Harvard Law School and the legacy is still on. So what exactly Langdell did? So I have uh, made a tabular format from the available literature on uh, Langdell and his uh, teaching technique, clinical legal education, or colloquially speaking, case method. 
So traditional legal education before Langdale until 1870, this was uh, driven by idealism that law is uh, life, law is uh, governance, uh, law is uh, at the apex of public policy, law is meant for uh, good life, law is meant for order, etc. All these uh, usually we uh, find in uh, jurisprudence, classroom teaching, etc. But uh, Langdale uh, took a U-turn. Langdale turned to realism. So uh, in many, many ways, this uh, Langdale regime, it, is, uh, it actually created a paradigm shift from idealism to realism. Langdale uh, uh, initiated uh, the more uh, practical or pragmatism-based teaching that uh, law is actually uh, to take care of law and order, to take care of peace, uh, to take care of public tranquility, and uh, to decide uh, any dispute uh, very uh, with emphatic manner. The way uh, Ju Justice Marshall uh, uttered that law is uh, to emphatically say what the law is. Uh, so the uh, Department of Justice is meant to say that is the court is meant to say what the authoritative what the law is. So that type of realism, idealism to realism, this is one turning point. Another is textbook to casebook. So very very important uh, invention by Langdale that. Uh, Earlier days, uh, even nowadays, we uh, trust on textbook uh, reading and teaching from textbook, etc. The Langdale, uh, uh, Langdale took a position that no, now onwards, uh, we'll be uh, teaching law through casebook. Casebook is something uh, uh, which needs a little introduction. Casebook is not uh, the uh, only uh, a book which will contain cases, judgments after judgments, not like that. This book is a systematic selection of those cases which create precedents. First, number one, that is uh, in case book, uh, not uh, many, many cases will be there. Very, very selective cases. Uh, the way you will find uh, from the website of University of Delhi, Campus Law Center, Faculty of Law. Uh, they have uploaded all the case books, and this is a, a great contribution of Delhi University to the national <coughs> level legal education. That case book is a very carefully crafted uh, selection of very, very few cases which creates precedents in, uh, in a particular uh, law point. In a particular subject, maybe it may be contract. Uh, the uh, number of cases uh, may not be uh, 10 or 15 to the extent. But uh, what will be the casebook? Casebook uh, will not be the replication of the judgment. Casebook takes care of a summary of cases. And not very details, not very precise, but summary of cases with and uh, to be uh, drafted by the teacher or the team of teachers to preparing case book is a big challenge. Uh, I, uh, from my senior colleagues, I know that how difficult it is. It takes years to prepare a case book of uh, maybe 100 pages because uh, not it is not the replication or photocopy of judgments. The judgments has to be summarized, not very precise, not very detailed. But with all the points of ratio dissidentity, uh, with a few important uh, obiter dicta also. So in that way, uh, case that is in the case book, the way summary of judgments will be written, it will be it will actually reflect. It will mirror the entire judgment in a short form, because uh, we are meant to offer uh, this judgment uh, teaching to the first timer. So in that way, preparation of case book, it is a big challenge. Thereafter, another shift is jurisprudence and legal theory to civil and criminal procedure because uh, Langdale is basically a lawyer, professional lawyer turned uh, 
academician. So he entered uh, at legal academy at a late age. So uh, he shared his uh, early experience that in civil and criminal procedure, the way students of law struggle with uh, at, in the real courtroom uh, life situation, that uh, they are taught jurisprudence and legal theory, and they are struggling with uh, cases, uh, intricate take tools and techniques of civil procedure and criminal procedure. So the thrust is shifted from theory to practice jurisprudence to civil procedure and criminal procedure. Also, very, very important, which uh, at later point of time we have inherited that uh, earlier three-year curriculum is shifted to five-year curriculum way back in 1870. So in that way, it is a revolution. Also, teacher-centric approach, that is the way they are in good old days. Uh, even now, uh, sometimes we uh, are comfortable with uh, monologue system. That is, uh, I shall teach and others shall listen. If there is any question, I will feel uncomfortable or uh, I will uh, try to send a message that, uh, no, 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 this is not done. I am teacher. You have to listen. Not like that. So. From monologue to dialogue, the teacher-centric approach is uh, replaced by the student-centric approach. So let us uh, generate a discussion on the basis of casebook. That is, casebook will be uh, offered to students at the very uh, beginning of the semester. And the student will be asked to read and come prepared. Thereafter, classroom, uh, classroom will be used for uh, generation of a dialogue rather than monologue because student is already uh, supposed to be aware of the case. So in that way, student-centric approach that is that is inter uh, today we call a uh, interactive class, etc. That uh, was also initiated at that point of time. Another uh, nowadays also the I, I guess that uh, this. Uh, uh, trendy has started already that subjective evaluation to objective evaluation is in good old days uh, in his time usually uh, people from the elite class uh, they used to uh, come to law school and identity uh, was very clear so there was a possibility there was a perception that elite class student will get more marks People from common background, uh, they will, uh, students, uh, commoners, uh, students, they will get less marks like that. So Langdale uh, initiated uh, evaluation, uh, blind evaluation. That is, there will be, uh, there will be uh, <coughs> uh, some code. Code will be used, codification of answer script, etc. Uh, this was for the first time, this was experimented by Langdale. So that uh, evaluation should be objective, not subjective, the way earlier it. Nowadays, uh, the, this has uh, advantage, disadvantage, both, but advantages uh, are many. So this transformative pedagogy uh, has its impact. It's far, it uh, left a far-reaching impact in USA the way I have uh, mentioned. I have given a statement uh, just uh, in short form that clinical legal education or this case method as such. Clinical legal education and case method, uh, there is a difference. Case method is a particular uh, technique, teaching technique, but case clinical legal education, it has a larger dimension in the sense that beyond uh, classroom technique of case method clinical legal education uh, takes care of many many other uh, uh, matters like uh, legal aid like uh, moot court moot court is very important moot court is at the center stage of the langdale uh, experiment because uh, langdale wanted to uh, create an army of efficient lawyers. That is very important. That is why in professional legal education, Langdale is very important. But at the same point of time, at later point of time, I will also be discussing, though the, uh, since I uh, started late little, 
uh, that is why I am cutting short a little bit. But uh, at later point of time, I will be discussing that why 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 this uh, clinical legal education was limited only to USA. That is very important question. That is, uh, in today's uh, National Law School and other premier law school, uh, the way uh, they are growing and they are uh, taking the legacy, uh, sometimes we uh, uh, feel that uh, across the world, uh, this is the only way of uh, law teaching or legal education. Not like that. Because uh, this Langdale and his legacy uh, so far, and I guess that it will continue, it is limited to USA only and, uh, and India. That is, in larger part of the world, uh, Langdale is uh, not important. That is, the way Langdale is uh, idolized in USA and uh, at later point of time, after 100 years in India also. Now, how uh, in India and how exactly after 100 years? Uh, this is a very important question on which uh, I have uh, created, I have quoted my presentation that is in India and just after 100 years that is 1870 and 1970 how this uh, magic uh, centenary year started uh, the revolutionizing legal education in India in which perspective that I will be uh, discussing because uh, through this I wanted to uh, send uh, another uh, uh, another idea that uh, anything is a research subject, that is uh, teaching technique or legal education teaching technique. This is also a very interesting legal research subject since I am sharing my ideas and opinions with law teachers or law researchers here. I uh, understand that LLM students and PhD students are also there. So I'm sharing my ideas that legal education or teaching tools and techniques also uh, can be a very, very uh, interesting uh, subject of legal research. That is uh, not legal, but social legal research, definitely. So uh, now let us uh, come back to our country. The, this uh, oft-quoted uh, uh, expression I have taken from A.L. Basham, uh, uh, learned scholar of ancient uh, Indian history, the wonder that was India, the, a similar but not exactly the same experiment went initiated by modern India in 1970. Remember that 1870, uh, uh, Langdale is uh, uh, taking the seat of uh, Harvard Law School uh, Dean. And 1970, exactly 1970 onwards, uh, another experiment is getting started in India. Now, in India, India is uh, in many, many ways hypothecated to USA so far as our constitution is concerned, our uh, several uh, that is judiciarily uh, uh, is concerned. Uh, our legal system, due process of law, etc. We know that uh, we are indebted to the American legacy so far as the legal system is concerned. Legal education also. So how I am uh, taking care of this? Uh, this is practically the spirit. Otherwise, uh, only uh, teaching techniques, legal education. There are, I will uh, share after this uh, presentation is over, I will share the relevant study materials. In India, there is one good study material. I found that Dhar and Dhar, uh, two scholars, they have written in Asian Journal of Legal Education. So on case, uh, case method. So that I will also share and a few other uh, JSTOR articles also. This is relevant uh, in the line and length of my deliberation. So that I will also share. But uh, the thrust point of my deliberation is very, very different. I'm giving you the perspective that uh, on the basis of this, you can judge that whether and how far, uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning of my lecture uh, the deliberation, that whether and how far uh, to uh, 
टेक क्लिनिकल लीगल एजुकेशन और प्रिसाइज केस मेथड इन आवर क्लासरूम टीचिंग और इन आवर एजुकेशनल एज एजुकेशनल एपर्ट सो दैट यू डिसाइड बिकॉज हियर आई एम अनफोल्डिंग द हिस्टोरिकल बैकग्राउंड so uh, very uh, very common picture uh, at the, at every station we find in india that uh, uh, the, uh, this is uh, the due to the so aditi can you can you uh, the share the uh, this is malfunctioning i guess so we are able to see the slides <laughs> no but uh, it is not uh, coming properly can okay, you uh, uh, so so uh, yeah. ab uh, let me present the screen then yes please so i need to uh, learn this part also yeah. oh no so, uh, now uh, from pdf it is coming uh, fine okay okay sir and, uh, because earlier in P uh, ppt format was creating some problem so now noxal body uh, this is not only the uh, uh, name, nomenclature of uh, uh, railway station very very insignificant railway station the way uh, it is not well maintained you can see actually uh, this is the reason of noxal body that is uh, it actually reflects the situation of rural india uh that is uh, usually the country uh, in uh, across the world this is the situation that any country is uh, primarily uh, run by urban elites any country is uh, run by prim primarily run by urban elites so usually we uh, are less careful about the rural hamlets uh, noxal body is uh, situated at a very remote corner of northern bengal but it has created the history because uh, uh, i am 100% sure that all of you are aware of this buzzword naxalbari and what it means so naxalbari movement i have in my ongoing work i have uh, uh, i have made uh, uh, in a way a simile Uh, literary term s i m i l i e uh, means uh, uh, comparative study between two aspects of almost similar uh, things like uh, american civil war if you take american civil war in one side and the naxal body movement in another side obviously american civil war uh, it has a very large uh, panorama Uh, and a lo very long history uh, of uh, black white etc racial discrimination naxal body is uh, not that way uh, a long history it has but uh, naxal body can be a parallel of american civil war in a uh, few aspects that naxal body challenged uh, very successfully challenged for some time this 1967 to 1972 the newly decolonized uh, country india uh, the new republic uh, and uh, the aspiration of the people of india the commoners uh, uh, before 1947 and 1947 to 1967 these 20 years the way things went uh, that is uh, republic of india took its own time to get consolidated so at that point of time aspiration of the commoners especially the rural india was uh, not uh, met uh, to that point the, so abject poverty abject inequality rich poor divide especially uh, in rural india as we know that uh, it has uh, uh, it has uh, actually created uh, uh, a series of litigation also that is land reforms law uh, in a way keshavananda bharati also it is uh, land reforms related land related so uh, 
in consequence, American civil war, the way it has impacted uh, the American legal system, governance, uh, or uh, very, very similar way, Naxalbari movement, at least in the, in the eastern peninsula of India, that is uh, down the line, if you take the states uh, bordering Bay of Bengal, that is uh, this... Uh, Andhra Pradesh, today Telangana is also there, Orissa, Bengal, uh, and adjacent states like uh, Bihar, Chharkhand, uh, etc., Chhattisgarh, RDR, Madhya Pradesh. So, at least in the in a vast part of this country, uh, lawlessness prevailed. At uh, it, it is uh, the direct consequence of Naxalbari movement. Actually, Naxalbari movement uh, sprang from lawlessness, and uh, it has actually cons consequential to further lawlessness. And result is same that phenomenon loss of life, liberty, property. So far as Naxalbari movement is concerned, I am speaking uh, not about the sporadic and nowadays sporadic ambush uh, just, uh, cases of spor sporadic ambush are there. But I'm not speaking about the sporadic cases. I am speaking about the Naxalbari movement, 1967 to 1972, huge loss of life, uh, liberty, torture. Torture means loss of dignity, property, loss of property, etc. So impact was uh, very, very similar, if not exactly the same. The, just uh, in the uh, last slide, uh, the way I mentioned that it is similar, yet not exactly the same. So this Naxalbari movement, 1967 to 1972, I am equalizing, that is, uh, as a discourse, the American Civil, uh, uh, American civil War and Naxalbari movement. Naxalbari movement, in a way, civil war. That is a low-scale civil war, not to the extent of American Civil War, uh, but uh, 1861 to 1865. But yes, uh, in uh, parts of India, at least the eastern part of India, northern part of India, it is a low-scale civil war. So, uh, if you uh, say so. So, in that way, now uh, actual operative part is getting started, that is uh, the entry of Ford Foundation uh, to rescue. Ford Foundation, Ford Foundation has its own history that Ford Foundation is uh, actually spearheading the uh, American way of uh, liberty and justice. Uh, the American way of liberty, equality, justice, uh, that is uh, the liberty, equality, fraternity. Uh, if you take the history, you will uh, reach the French Revolution, 1789 also. Uh, spoke about liberty, equality, fraternity. American uh, War uh, of Independence also talked about liberty, equality, fraternity. Indian Constitution also spoke about uh, liberty, equality, and fraternity in its preamble. Now, uh, very, uh, very interesting that uh, if you want to characterize the uh, Constitution of India, uh, this uh, will come handy because uh, French Revolution, as uh, it is uh, settled by history, and that it was a capitalist revolution. American War of Independence, it was also a revolution by settlers. Uh, now, Indian Constitution, if uh, we take it as independence of the colonized people, uh, the character is same, that is liberty, equality, fraternity. Now, liberty, equality, fraternity, I am repeating because if you uh, take out the meaning of liberty, uh, that is equality for uh, liberty followed by equality, that is first liberty, then equality. So, in that way, if we uh, take out a meaning, we will find that uh, liberty, which is an icon of civil and political rights, spearheaded by the capitalist economic system. Thereafter, equality, which is actually the mantra of the socialist movement across the world at that point of time. So uh, in that way, it has a character. And Ford Foundation was actually constituted, if we uh, see the basic uh, documents of Ford Foundation, which is uh, 
an American organization for social justice, uh, we'll find that it is meant to spearhead the liberty, equality, fraternity. So it has its own uh, class character, if we say, uh, the, after the Marxist jargon. Uh, and uh, Ford Foundation is coming to the rescue of Indian legal education. Very, very uh, important point. And Ford Foundation is extending support, huge financial support for Indian legal education. It is not for the downtrodden, it is not for the flood victim, drought victim, nothing. Uh, it is not, not for poverty alleviation, reduction of poverty, nothing. It is for Indian legal education. Now, why suddenly Ford Foundation has got so much interest that it, it is pouring tons of dollars for uh, Indian legal education? And that also professional legal education. What is the uh, point of what uh, it wants to achieve? So if we take care of this, that one is uh, export of U.S. pedagogy. By that time, U.S. understood that American Indian legal system is actually following the American legal system. Now, it is export of U.S. pedagogy to the arch-trial colonies because uh, ideologically U.S. is opposed to colonization because uh, U.S.A. was earlier almost a colony and uh, it is a country of settlers they actually uh, stood against colonization of usa and they got independence so they are against colonization now they are exporting their ideology their pedagogy to the south asian country india the south asian giant now why one of the reasons, as per my reading, is a specter of communism. That is, I am uh, using the first sentence of the manifesto of the Communist Party, uh, the classic uh, pamphlet of uh, written by Marx and Engels, the specter, a specter is hunting Europe, the specter of communism. At that point of time, remember that the uh, Cold War is on. So US Soviet Union versus USA, and India is uh, pro-USSR, that is uh, the settled foreign policy of India at that point of time. So, uh, uh, and in this situation, left movement, radical left movement, Naxalwadi is on. And Indian government is in trouble. That is to the extent that even in 2009, Dr. Manmohan Singh declared that uh, Naxal, Naxal movement is the la single largest uh, threat to Indian security. So uh, to the extent that uh, 2009, Dr. Manmohan Singh as Prime Minister is declaring that Naxal uh, movement is the single largest threat to Indian security. Now this specter of communism, the way USA found that uh, Indian government is tr uh, troubled by a radical left movement. So actually, they sensed uh, the specter of communism in India. Now, 1848, 1848, uh, Marx Engels uh, found the specter of communism in Europe. Uh, 1967, after 110 years, uh, USA is uh, sensing the specter of communism in India. Now, Ford Foundation uh, went operative because it wanted to uh, offer democratic safeguards, safeguards to democracy. India is the largest democracy of the world. USA is the oldest democracy of the world. Also, in that way, out of fellow feeling, though knowing very well that by foreign policy, India is closer to USSR, still, since India is the largest democracy of the world, USA extended the supporting hand through Ford Foundation, not by government, but an NGO that uh, uh, let us uh, build the, uh, um, uh, the Indian uh, legal education. Why Indian legal education? As I mentioned earlier, uh, while I was discussing the US history, that 
this American legal education, this pedagogy, this case method, clinical legal education introduced by Langdell, that left a very, very lasting, far-reaching impact on the American legal system because the civil wars is uh, the way this uh, undermined American civil war, the way it undermined the uh, authority of law, the legitimacy of law. So that, uh, that is, the American legal system got a big beating out of this American civil war. And uh, Langdell's legacy helped America to get out of this uh, lack of legacy. So it regained, the American legal system regained power out of this uh, case method because uh, students uh, were made to be professional, that is uh, professional lawyer. So uh, the focus was on courtroom system, focus was on institution, focus was on establishment, focus was on authority. That is, uh, in a, at later point of time, I will uh, end my deliberation with that uh, slide that uh, there are par other parallels also. There are other parallels also that is beyond this courtroom system because law was not uh, initiated by court. Let me be very candid that law was there since day one of the civilization. Courtroom rather, courtroom is relatively, uh, the, a courtroom emerged relatively at much a later point of time. When civilization has developed, courtroom emerged. But law, law existed. Law is the sibling of civilization. Law existence, uh, law existed from day one of the civilization. That is, uh, civilization was born with law, and civilization will die with law. So law is there always. But courtroom, as a judicial institution, this has emerged much later. Uh, that is uh, one point. And legal education reform, uh, the Ford Foundation extended to Delhi University that uh, I'm coming to that uh, point in next slide, and patronage to Apex Court, that more the students, the next generation lawyers will be court-centric, more the courtroom as a judicial institution will be powerful, it will gain legitimacy. So that is the politics behind this clinical legal education is charged with politics of its own, ideological politics, not politics in a uh, negative sense, but politics in a uh, positive sense. The way Aristotle uh, expressed that Aristotle defined politics as the household management. That is, if the city state at that point of time, Greek civilization was divided in city states. Now, what is politics? Politics is the politics uh, comprise the tools and techniques of the city-state management. Aristotle called it household management. So in that way, that is uh, politics is nothing but a management, not today's politics. So that is, uh, that will take us uh, away. So pilot project of Ford Foundation started with University of Delhi. So campus law center initiated experiments with clinical legal education. That way I mentioned some time back that Justice Nariman was uh, remembering that he joined uh, uh, the uh, campus law center in 1976, uh, immediately, immediately after the clinical legal education or case method was adopted by the faculty of law and it was adopted actually by the patronage of Ford Foundation because Ford Foundation arranged several consecutive visits of American law professors who came here in Delhi University, who stayed back in Delhi University for months and who actually taught the teachers at that point of time. Uh, he mentioned uh, Professor Munchan Sharma, etc. So, uh, so that uh, time, uh, Professor A.K. called Professor Mocha, that is all these people are nowadays retired also. So that generation was actually prepared, trained by several visits of uh, American law professors from uh, premier law schools of USA. And uh, uh, also these people went to USA 
uh, say for example, I worked with Professor Ekipal, he visited uh, Michigan University uh, several times. So uh, in that way, that is exchange of uh, law professors from Delhi University to Michigan, from Yale to Delhi University. So this was entirely funded by Ford Foundation, which actually the organization is meant for social justice. Kindly visit, uh, browse the website, you will understand. So suddenly Ford Foundation is uh, fun uh, financing the Delhi University law faculty. The, the, of all the departments, only law faculty. And De why Delhi University? Because it is in the national capital. So, and uh, what, what is actually uh, the, that uh, time profil, the Delhi University professors were getting trained uh, in uh, American legal realism, uh, case book uh, or procedural laws. Interestingly, interestingly, this Langdale and Holmes, that is the time Justice uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. Uh, started uh, propagating American legal realism. Langdale is actually starting uh, propagating the legal formalism at the same point of time. That is, it is also very, uh, uh, history is very interesting. That is, in America, legal formalism and legal uh, realism, they are uh, developing their own castles, though they are actually rivals at the same point of time. 1872, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr., he is also propagating American legal realism in courtroom. That is, in courtroom, judge is saying that what is decided in courtroom that is not court based. This is said by courtroom judge. That is, uh, to, uh, to pronounce uh, his own words, in his own words, that life of law has not been uh, in logic it has been in experience so this is the told by courtroom judge in the same year and in the same year langdale is saying that no we have to learn the courtroom practice so different different genre different different philosophy they are at interplay earlier also i mentioned at uh, one point of time few minutes back that uh, it is this Langdale legacy is on, limited only to USA and India. Why? In the entire European legal system, in the European legal education court, this uh, case method is not at all applied. I repeat, in the entire European legal education system, case method has no relevance. Why? It is because that three-fourth of the country in the world, across the world, three-fourth of the countries are governed by civil law system, which follows inquisitorial tradition, legal tradition, where case law has no value because those are court-based legal systems, statute-based legal system with the genesis in the Roman law, the, which is called canon law. Uh, the, or in uh, uh, academic term, we call it civil law. Whereas in this American legal system uh, follows common law, which was there uh, only in uh, the United Kingdom, that is uh, England, Ireland, and Wales. Except this, now, uh, even in England, uh, this uh, case method uh, is not appropriate because, because historical background is different. Because of American Civil War, state uh, was state got a beating, and state wanted to recover this beating. State wanted to recover the legitimacy or authority through this teaching technique, through this pedagogy. That is not the history of England, Ireland, and Wales. That is why, though common law system, but uh, England does not follow the, the case law method at all. And uh, so far as entire Europe is concerned, there is no relevance because case, the, the legal system is not case law based. I hope uh, I, I am uh, reaching to your mind. That is uh, why in India, why sitting in, in South Asia, uh, we need to estimate, we need to assess, we need to evaluate uh, 
uh, whether and how far the case law methods will apply though uh, we have we are already applying but at later point of time we will find that even in indian legal education system there is reaction there is reaction discursive reaction against uh, uh, this uh, case law method case method uh, that i am coming in the i will actually end my deliberation with the last slide there you will get so campus law center uh, is uh, initiated uh, these experiments realism casebook procedural laws are already i have discussed earlier so i am not repeating now but uh, very soon uh, it was understood that dead university experiment uh, will uh, cannot leave lasting impact upon this uh, continent type country it is the country is huge though uh, delhi university gets students from every nooks and corner of the country but uh, the country is so vast that uh, there is need to spread uh, this uh, clinical legal education or case method otherwise also now law school is born so law school movement it has also history its own history and uh, it has relevance that is case method law school is born to offer legal education through case method so nlsiu bangalore uh, uh, initiated the experiment 1986 onward the clinical legal education spread across south asian soil five year curriculum for the first time uh, it was offered in nlsiu bangalore student centric approach and inclusive education etc inclusive education here it uh, uh, needs your attention because inclusive education means that is here lies the spirit that law school though it was meant to uh, spread the case method of clinical legal education but in practice uh, professor menon and uh, uh, at later point of time his successors also but uh, basically it is student driven student initiative that uh, students started uh, uh, learning critical education also that is uh, it is it is the students uh, the board student body which transcended from clinical legal education at later point of time i will uh, portray that uh, that nuj student is writing uh, challenging the, the case method or clinical legal education on moot court moot court is the citadel or it is the icon of clinical legal education so NUJ student is actually contesting the moot court as, as a paradigm of teaching pedagogy. So that, uh, that is the last slide I am coming. Uh, so law and subversion that is uh, we have seen that is uh, I remember uh, my reading of uh, Milton milton wrote paradise lost and in Par paradise lost if you read you will find the entire that is uh, law is not only in statute book or judgment that is literature is uh, our classical literature uh, world literature is written with the law only. that is entire narrative of uh, paradise lost the way milton wrote it is the law and subversion so i have used that uh, expression that uh, subversion is nothing negative that is usually it is uh, used as negative but uh, it is actually offering an alternative version a subversion that is it is actually unfolding the possibility of another version so law is one version official law of the land is one version but there may be other version of the law also that is otherwise uh, how can we uh, contest british government because british government uh, was uh, ruling us by law uh, that is uh, the government of india act 1858 the government of india act 1919 the government of india act 1935 so we were lawfully uh, uh, being ruled by uh, british government so what is the problem problem lies here that uh, colonized people, Indian colonized people of India have their own version of law, which is subversion. So at that point of time, several martyrs, today we call them martyrs, 
they were uh, hanged at a later point of time after India got independence, they were treated as martyrs. Uh, so I remember uh, the, uh, the the martyr Surya Sen, uh, uh, revol Bengali revolutionary. He was hanged uh, by Calcutta High Court in 1911, uh, if I uh, uh, if I, year is not mistaken by me. And after independence, a uh, larger than life statue is erected just in front of Calcutta High Court, and every year Chief Justice of Calcutta High Court offered. So garland to that martyr who was hanged by that same Calcutta High Court and Chief Justice offers. So uh, that is, it is subversion. That is, uh, British version was he was a criminal. Uh, our version, which is, which was subversion, now it has been elevated to version uh, that he is martyred. So it it has happened in in case of all uh, yeah, even in time of Bangladesh Liberation Movement uh, who were earlier who were criminals. Uh, so after uh, after independence of Bangladesh, they were transformed in martyrs. So the subversion is always there. And remember that I uh, I illustrated uh, Nalsar and NUJS, two premier national law schools after national law school Bangladesh. Now uh, try to understand the situation that Nalsar is uh, in the that is in, situated in uh, Hyderabad, that is Andhra Pradesh earlier Andhra Pradesh. Uh, which is in the uh, Bay of Bengal side, that is Eastern Peninsula, which is another half of the Naxalite movement. Bengal, as you know, that is uh, Bengali, we are trouble creators <laughs> for uh, that is, uh, we drove earlier, uh, Calcutta was the national capital until uh, 1911, we drove them to Delhi. So uh, we always, uh, we are always source of uh, trouble. So NUJ has also uh, joined in this uh, critical that is contesting the clinical legal education, offering critique to the clinical legal education. It has started, it, ha it has been very much there in Nalsar. It has uh, very much been there in NUJS also. To the extent I am coming to my last slide, that uh, if you that yeah, I have taken a screenshot, NUJS law review, which is uh, a premier uh, law review uh, in present time. Uh, so one researcher has published uh, in this uh, premier law journal that I object your honor. The moot court paradigm is mutable. I repeat, I object your honor. The moot court paradigm is mutable. That is moot court. This is actually contesting the clinical legal education as a pedagogy and case method because uh, I have read and she argued that actually uh, clinical legal education is driven by a presupposition that there is no other model. There is no other paradigm. Court is the only that is as if what court says is right. So in that way, a very monolithic uh, version that there, 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 which actually denies the existence of any other version. In that way, we will actually misunderstand the court uh, courtroom itself, because time and again we have seen that. Uh, in uh, Justice Hansaria judgment uh, in uh, Supreme Court was uh, overruled by the next judgment of Supreme Court, 1994 Justice Hansaria judgment on uh, 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 Section 309 of IPC was overruled after two uh, after two years in uh, 1996 next judgment of the Supreme Court. Supreme Court also overrules it so that is set aside its own earlier position. So in that way, within the judicial decisions also, there are many versions. That is, one dominates and other remain subversions. Say, for example, in habeas corpus judgment, that is, uh, ADR Jabal Kul Fasa Shivakanta Shukla, uh, their Justice Khanna's uh, opinion was minority opinion. So that was dissenting opinion. So within within the same judgment, within the corpus of the same judgment, there are subversions. That is, dissenting opinions are subversions. And there are uh, path-breaking uh, research also, which got PhD. My friend, Dr. Yogesh Pratap Singh, 
uh, in his PhD uh, on dissenting opinions. So uh, we find that how enriching uh, the PhD was that dissenting open that is the entire PhD is on dissenting opinion. So he established that dissenting opinion is uh, uh, is uh, one dormant version. Actually, it is subversion because the Justice Khanna uh, actually opined against the majority judgment. In very recent judgment, Shabarimala judgment, Justice Hindu Malhotra, uh, the only dissenting voice uh, that is uh, Shabarimala judgment is all about women rights and only one uh, lady judge uh, has is writing dissenting opinion. How wonderful this is. That is, I am not going into who is right, who is wrong. I am uh, trying to unfold the possibility of many versions. Uh, we are living in a plural world. So why not accepting pluralism? But, uh, but as a discourse, clinical legal education, there is a, uh, there is a monolithic trend that uh, this court says that is uh, actually I am uh, unfolding another tension between legal formalism and legal realism. As I told earlier that uh, Justice Oliver Olden House Jr. and uh, uh, this uh, Professor Langdell, they are operating at the same point of time. So this is also one is if Langdell is version, Oliver Wendell Holmes is subversion. Uh, can we afford to say that judge is sub, uh, giving subversion and Langdell is version? So uh, that is both are versions. That is no nothing is inferior to another. Uh, in time uh, at later point of time, American legal system thought that uh, Langdell should have been given primacy. Maybe after 50 years uh, down the line, if American legal system feels that um, it is time to appreciate uh, American legal realism, then again, uh, Justice Oliver and then Holmes uh, will come to forefront and Langdale uh, has to seek at the back bench. So the ideas goes, ideas come, ideas go. We have to honor them. Uh, uh, equally. So that is the note with which uh, I will end uh, that with clinical education getting contested by critical education and by a law school act. So history has turned a full circle. So uh, I will send uh, some uh, material by which uh, how to deal with this uh, case method in classroom teaching. Third and third in uh, Asian Journal of Legal Education, they have done a good job. Uh, besides that, I have come across uh, while I was working on this subject for long. I have come across several uh, good materials. Uh, some of some of which will uh, support my contention. Some of which uh, will oppose my and to send through uh, uh, through uh, Aditi Madam uh, very soon after this presentation. So with clinical education getting contested by critical education, history has turned a full cycle. That is, I am uh, throughout this so one hour, uh, 40 minutes, I try to unfold that uh, clinical legal education, uh, it its historical background, the way it has emerged in America, the way it has uh, reached India, uh, the politics behind, economics behind the pedagogical uh, experiments, also, uh, as a discourse, uh, uh, what are the merits and demerits, the perspective, etc. So, for further clarification, I am available here, deputter at naduasan.ac.in. I end here. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the insightful session. Now, with your permission, I would like to open the house for deliberation, discussion, and any queries. Please. Okay, I request the participants now, in case you have any observations, queries, please unmute yourself. The, just one clarification, uh, throughout this deliberation, I was... Uh, 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 I was mindful that I am speaking uh, to my colleagues and not to my students. So essentially, I wanted to generate a dialogue. 
Uh, so interactive session so, I am waiting for because here I will so get a takeaway for uh, for myself because uh, I I have come here as a learner also. Yes, sir. True. So we have so, someone who would like to say, yeah, please go ahead. Please. Sir, uh, uh, Devasis Podarsha, sir, my, my question is uh, that we, while learning the case study, we only focus on the landmark judgment, but we don't focus on the recent judgment. And while we are practicing, we focus on the recent judgment, we don't focus on the landmark judgment. Uh, I repeat. While, re while learning in the law school, we focus on only landmark judgments. No, 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 not necessarily. Not necessarily because... Uh, essentially, the, if you take uh, uh, the which subject you teach, sir, I am a student, a little student. Okay, so the usually the in uh, during uh, the uh, when I was student, I also learned uh, recent judgments from my teachers only. That uh, in last week this uh, judgment uh, is delivered. So let us uh, have a session. So. Uh, earlier flow of uh, classroom teaching uh, got stopped. I am uh, I am uh, sharing my experience in National Law School, Bangalore. I was student there. I did my LLM there. So uh, time and again, at least four or five times, my teacher uh, stopped regular classroom teaching and took up the judgment uh, delivered last week. And uh, we were supposed to read and come prepared. And in this way, the, the entire hour is the, the discussion on the recent judgment. The teacher is uh, sharing his insight. We are sharing what we have read and understood. So recent judgment, language, teaching and learning, this goes uh, side by side. And that is uh, not like that, that only landmark judgment. But yes, there is time shortage, etc. So I remember that uh, uh, how many Sundays we, we were taken to class. I don't remember how many Sundays because argument of teachers and authority also in NLS Bangalore that this is a residential university. You are here for day and night, 24 into 7, including Sunday. So I remember the even 11 p.m. we were called for class and we went to class and by up to 12.15. So uh, when it is residential university, there is no bar of learning that uh, class time or weekend, nothing like that. So only thing is that uh, whether there is ecosystem to take uh, for the students and teachers, both sides should be ready to take this opportunity to learn. Thank you. Good morning, Good morning sir. My name is Dr. Purvi Kantru. I am an LLM and PhD from Nalzar and an assistant professor at Iqfai Law School, Hyderabad. Uh, my question to you is, uh, do you think pro bono solutions or pro bono cases can be an add-on supplement to this whole process of clinical education? Yes, 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 definitely. Because uh, uh, in uh, I did my LLM and MPhil, uh, not PhD, but uh, up to MPhil, I did uh, LLM and MPhil, I did from uh, law school Bangalore. So I can share my experience. That is, I was the uh, student representative, LLM student representative in legal aid clinic, LAC. So very, very successful uh, uh, initiative of National Law School Bangalore since long back. So legal aid clinic, the way I understood uh, uh, that legal aid clinic and moot court, these are actually complementary and supplementary to one another. That is, you cannot think of, uh, that is a legal aid clinic. We used to take the real life cases we adopted one village called Ramnagar. It is still there. That is NLSIU Bangalore adopt a legal aid clinic, the department. They adopted a village called Ramnagar, few kilometers away from Bangalore, around 40, 35, 40 kilometers. I went there also. So uh, we students used to go there. We used to uh, listen to the villagers, their problems, their land problems, their marital problems other uh, uh, problems uh, sometimes we used to uh, suggest something sometimes we used to take note we used to come back we used to discuss with our teachers uh, there were impanent lawyers 
and on the basis of we sometimes uh, we uh, uh, used to take care of this as a moot court exercise moot court not moot court competition moot, mooting within the classroom exercise this is a more uh, i have at later point of time when i was employed in uh, nlu jodhpur uh, at that point of time, nlu jodhpur has a very vibrant classroom exercise it called cre CRE is an integral part of every subject that is except jurisprudence. Uh, every subject has a CRE. That is, you have to, it is a, a sort of simulation exercise. Uh, the, the teacher will uh, issue a problem to uh, maybe two, eight students for this side, for that side. And uh, teacher will adjust this uh, after one week. Uh, throughout this week, the uh, students will do research on this. They will formulate the argument in this side and that side, four plus four, for this side, for that side. And uh, so legally, clinic, yes, uh, it is one way of channelizing that is strengthening the moot court. And uh, the capacity which are gaining in moot court that we can use in legal aid. That is legal aid clinic and moot court. These are complementary and supplementary to one another. So in that way, I have seen experiment uh, is there in NLS Bangalore and NLU Jodhpur. NLU Rachi also we had more classroom exercise, but uh, uh, I, the, especially so far as this part of the experiment is concerned, I really appreciate uh, NLS Bangalore and NLU Jodhpur, Moot Court and Legal Aid, uh, very, very strong initiative there. But though in recent time, uh, the NUSR Rachi is also keeping uh, stress on Legal Aid Clinic. It is a recent development. Uh, now it is doing very well. No, I hope could be I could uh, address uh, your absolutely yes thank you thank you so much uh, hi sir good afternoon I am Prince Kumar from M University I am a research scholar and a guest faculty to M University I just uh, I was reading an article from Dr D Y Chandrachur that the ground related to assess the legal aid services is really a, a success or a failure or is the collective tolerance of legal fraternity? Uh, can you kindly repeat? Uh, sir, it is a statement given by Dr. D.Y. Chandrachud, uh, Mr. Uh, Justice D.Y. Chandrachud, ground related to assess of legal aid services, all of collective failure of legal fraternity. Legal aid services, uh, there are two sides, uh, things. One is uh, legal aid services uh, through the legal system. That is, if you take the flowchart of Legal Services Authorities Act. Another is the legal aid clinic of uh, the law school. So far as legal aid clinic of law school is concerned, I, I am uh, uh, the, I am of opinion Justice Chandrachur may have uh, identified the, the legal services uh, authorities uh, this flowchart that is statutory flowchart, isn't it? Thank you, sir. Uh, no, no, I, I I am trying to underscore that Justice Chandrachur may have identified the failure of uh, legal services authority. Uh, the, that is, the, there is Legal Services Authorities Act. Under that legal aid services, uh, uh, it should to go. Uh, yes, I am of opinion uh, that is uh, last three years I was in St. Javier's University in administrative position. So... I also wanted to make the legal aid clinic uh, operative. To some extent, I could. Uh, not much because uh, actually my tenure collided with COVID situation. So not much I could do. But I have seen that legal aid clinic of uh, law schools, this is partial success. Partial success because of practical reasons. Practical reason lies here that teachers and students nowadays, due to uh, due to NAC, etc., uh, teachers are so loaded with paperwork, admin works, etc. This is one second point. 
uh, students are also burdened with so many events of assessment my god that is i i feel i am fortunate that i passed earlier <laughs> uh, so first assessment second assessment third fourth fifth mood for these that has so many subjects five year course so i did three years so i feel myself fortunate in that way so yeah but uh, uh, yes, uh, whether justice told uh, that is usually we accept after justice tells something, but it is ground reality that uh, we uh, we could not accomplish much under the legal services uh, that that is there, and in pandemic situation, not many things can be done, but uh, there is space for improvement. I agree with your point, Prince. Because sir, in recent time, na, in uh, pandemic time, that uh, we were doing a project in uh, one district jail, and uh, we found that the uh, people under trial are not getting the proper uh, legal aid services from legal aid clinic, and uh, they are still uh, uh, only well, just. That, that is, uh, 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 you are absolutely right that in pandemic situation, whether lawyer will save themselves or they will save uh, the uh, prisoners. But yeah, even in normal time, even during normalcy also, there is, uh, that is, we, we could not do much. That is, ultimately, if you take the cause of North Salvari movement, that is, uh, I, uh, the, I don't share the hostility in, uh, uh, initiated by them, but at the same point of time, cause of North Salvari is uh, just and reasonable. That is, uh, the rich, poor, divide. Uh, is so much access to justice is so far that uh, people die in frustration so the yeah, i i understand and appreciate your concern please thank you sir. yes uh, sir good morning good morning dr devashi is nice to see you <laughs> thank you sir you are fine i am fine and thank you for getting time to take a great session Please visit our campus once pandemic gets over. Uh, sure. Uh, uh, well, I wish that I will survive and I will be for <laughs> no, no, enough. No, 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 <laughs> a long way to go. Yeah. True, true. Uh, if there are no more queries, then we can end the session. So thank you, Professor Debashish, for the insightful session and taking us through the trajectory of uh, case law method and contextualizing it for us in different contexts. So thank you for that. Thank you for sparing your time, sir. And yeah, now I request the participants to please fill in the feedback form. It is mandatory for your attendance. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. OK, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. I think Professor Poddar, he left the session. You, I request the participants to fill the feedback form. The link is given in the chat box. The link is open for 15 minutes. Thank you, Azim, sir. Thank you, Dabre, sir. Thank you, uh, all. Thank you, Shweta, ma'am, for moderating the session. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you to all. Our next session, session is scheduled at 2 p.m. The link is already given to all the participants. I am ending this session. Uh, the link is given in the chat box. Please take the link of the feedback from, from there. The form is open for only 15 minutes. Thank you. Ma'am, if you could just give me one minute, I need to access it from another device. Yeah, sure, sure. It's uh, um, I'm on here. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, I request you to kindly share the link for the feedback form once again. Uh, it's shared again. Thank you, ma'am.